Good afternoon. I'll introduce myself. I am Debbie Critchfield, President of the State Board of Education. And to my right is Linda Clark, board member, and Andy Scoggin, board member and secretary for the board. And I think uh, we will have a roll call on the phone to see who we have. Is this the mute button here? Okay, don't touch the technology. <laughs> I will not do that. All right, um, Allison, please. Mrs. Critchfield. Here. Dr. Hill. Present. Mr. Scoggin. Here. Dr. Clark. Present. Mrs. Ashley. Here. Mr. Saltman. Here. Mr. Westerberg. Present. Superintendent Ibarra. Here. Thank you. Uh, board members, as you know, we are meeting for the purpose of selecting the next president of Boise State University. And at this point, I would accept a motion. Madam President, it's a pleasure to uh, address you as President Richfield. And it is my honor and pleasure to move to appoint Marlene Trump as president of Boise State <laughs> University. If I, if I may, I'll continue the uh, motion. Ah, are we are we ready for the rest of the motion? <laughs> yes, this is a good sign. However, <laughs> um, I I move to appoint Marlene Trump as president of Boise State University, effective July first, two thousand nineteen at the annual salary of $425,000 and to approve the employment agreement provided. I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, Allison, will you call the roll? Mrs. Ashley. Yes, aye. <laughs> Dr. Clark. Aye. Mrs. Critchfield. Aye. Dr. Hill. Aye. Mr. Scoggin. Aye. Mr. Saltman? Aye. Mr. Westerberg? Aye. Superintendent Ibarra? Aye. Motion carries. The motion is unanimous. And I would like to uh, briefly and, and hard, uh, wholeheartedly thank those that have served on the committee. Uh, we had three board members that were a part of that, as well as faculty, community members. Uh, the search was, was thorough. And uh, we are uh, pleased with the the candidate and the success that we believe that she can bring to the institution. And at this point, I'd like to turn uh, the time over. Actually, we need to adjourn first. <laughs> and then uh, Dr. Clark um, will have some remarks and comments um, for our new president. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion. Is that a second, Richard? It is. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is an, is an exciting day. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, I have uh, become ever pronoun conscious uh, <laughs> with the myriad of requests about um, what, what was the board doing. I'm going to wait just a moment. <laughs> It has been a tremendous honor to serve as the chairman of the screening committee, and I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank the individuals who served uh, with me on the committee. If you're here, please stand when I read your name. Please stay standing, and please hold your applause until the end. Andrew Scoggin, state board member. Dave Hill, state board member. Caleb Smith, ASBSU student body president. Tony Rourke, Interim Provost, Boise State University Administration Representative. Martin Orr, Faculty Senate President. Alicia Garza, Faculty Representative. Zainab Hansen, Faculty Representative. Tana Monroe, Professional Staff Re Representative. Ramona Martin, Classified Staff Representative. 
Barbara Morgan, faculty member emeritus and former NASA astronaut. Business representatives D. Mooney, Micron Foundation Executive Director. Rob Perez, First Interstate Bank, Idaho Region President. And Rod Lewis, retired Micron Technology Executive and former member of the State Board of Education. Our thanks to all of you. I've been reminded on a daily basis that this has been a long time coming. <laughs> In fact, as most of you know, it's a process that started over 18 months ago. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you, the students, the faculty, the staff, the alumni, and the boosters for showing tremendous patience through the process. But more importantly, I want to thank you for your active participation in the process. Your attendance at the Campus Canada events, the questions that you posed to the candidates, and the input that you provided the screening committee and the board have been very valuable in the selection process. I would also like to take a moment to publicly thank Boise State Interim President Dr. Marty Schimpf. Stand up and As you may know, a year ago last month, Marty delayed his long-planned return to the faculty and, <laughs> and instead, at the request of the board, agreed to take over the reins at Boise State. Thank you, Marty. You have been a steady hand on the wheel and you provided the board the opportunity to take a deep breath and extend the search a, a while longer so that we might find just the right person to lead Boise State. And ladies and gentlemen, we have succeeded. Dr. Marlene Tromp is an accomplished academic and administrator who is currently serving as provost and executive vice chancellor at the University of California, Santa Cruz. Prior to that, she served as Arizona State University's vice provost of the university's West Campus and dean of ASU's new College of Interdisciplinary Studies. She is also a noted author, lecturer, and instructor. Dr. Trump is ready to take her experience and knowledge from these leadership roles at two of the West's top-rated universities and work with all of you and all of us to continue Boise State's upward trajectory. I happen to know for a fact that she's ready to roll up her sleeves and get to work because she's already purchased a pair of Boise State cowboy boots. So she's <laughs> ready to go. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor and pleasure to introduce to you the seventh president of Boise State University, Dr. Marlene Trump. Thank you so much, everybody. Hello, Boise State. <laughs> First, I want to thank the Board of Education for placing their confidence in me. I am so excited to advance education in the state of Idaho. Second, I want to thank this amazing community for all of your support and your enthusiastic embrace of me. I am so delighted to be standing before you today at a university with a mission, because I am a leader with a mission, and I am so excited to see where we can take Boise State, our students, our faculty, and our community together. Boise State has already had an amazing trajectory with more innovative thinking, path-breaking research, unique degree programs, and a great will to become something better, to be its best self, to make a real impact. More than just growing in the last decades, Boise State has trailblazed, as Westerners have always done. This means we're not just about best practices, but about creating something new, not just about reaching out to the world, but leading it right from here, right from this place. The whole world needs what Boise State has to offer, 
and we're going to give it to them. I understand that Western ethos. I grew up in Wyoming, was reared with that independent, free-thinking, can-do spirit like so many of our students. I was first generation myself. As we reach across the state and the region to serve these people, the first generation population will grow even more. And so many of those talented students will have their lives changed by Boise State. It will be transformative. When I was a high school student, my academic service and athletics record won me a lot of opportunities for school. But I didn't really know how to utilize those. I didn't really know how to engage them. I didn't know what to do. My mother actually brought me into my sister's old bedroom. And there were college catalogs, because this was in the days when everything came by paper through the mail. There were college catalogs almost waist high in my sister's room, just filling up this room. And my mom opened the door and said, I don't know what to do with all of these. <laughs> I didn't either. The financial aid forms were baffling. I was overwhelmed by all the materials. I didn't know what to do. My guidance counselor said to me, well, have you drafted a college essay? And I said, yes, I had. He said, well, show it to me. Let me take a look at it. And so I showed it to him, and, and he said, can, I said, can you help me figure out how to apply for colleges? And he said, sure. Here's what the application fees are. And I said, oh, gosh, I don't know how I'm going to afford all that. So something that could only happen in the time when this happened, in the mid-'80s, my high school guidance counselor applied to schools for me on my behalf. He took that essay that I had written. He paid all the application fees. He had access to my transcripts and my board scores. And he called me into his office and he said, um, a couple of months later, and he said, I've got some great news for you. You have a full ride scholarship to this amazing university on the East Coast. Books, tuition, housing, everything, everything will be paid for. And I said, that sounds great. He named the school. I had no idea what it was. You know, it was uh, kind of a famous place, but you know, I was a small town Wyoming kid. And I brought this letter home to my dad proud that, you know, I had won this scholarship. I used to always say I got one of the highest ACT scores in the state, but there were only like three of us, so it wasn't really <laughs> that big of a deal. Um, so I felt proud nonetheless, and I brought these materials home, and my dad came home and he looked at the letter, and he looked at me and he said, honey, what would happen if you got all the way across the country and this turned out not to be real? Because for him, it was like a publisher's clearinghouse letter or something, you know, something you'd get in the mail and they'd say, you won a million dollars. And that's what it felt like to him. And he knew I was smart, but he just didn't know how to make this happen. So he said, you have to go to school someplace that's within a day's drive there and back from Green River, Wyoming. So I did. And he also told me I had to go to med school, which I didn't do. <laughs> Almost. I came close. I, I decided I was going to go to graduate school in English when I was just about to graduate. And my dad was like, you're killing me here. <laughs> I get you to college, and then you're going to do this. He was pretty proud in the end. I want to be able to do for other young people in the state and in the region what those people who helped me did for me. I want to help Boise State change more people's lives. I want to do the work that this university has done and continues to do. I want to lead that effort so we can do even more. Already, Boise State is changing the lives of individuals and whole families. It's enhancing the future of a state and a region. It leads in innovative thinking and change. The city of Boise and the state of Idaho have already shown the nation what a new innovative hub can look like. Boise State has been a national role model at rethinking higher education, ranking among the most innovative universities in the country. Now it's ready for its next great leap. We can innovate the university's research enterprise so its impact on you, the students, the faculty, and the community is even greater. With faculty like this, you can imagine, discover, and do amazing things. We can serve the students in new ways, 
so its impact is greater. With students like these, you can change the entire arc of the future. We can reach out and serve the city, the state, and the region with Bronco spirit and Bronco outcomes. With a community like this, faculty, staff, students, and supporters, you can change the world. At this exciting moment in the life of the university, I am proud to join you so we can plan that pathway, problem solve, and create innovative solutions together. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate your time and attention to this wonderful day. And with that, we will turn you loose. Thank you.